it's here. It's Tuesday, the 2nd of March, and Chain of Iron is here. And I forgot to charge my Kindle, so I've sat here waiting for four hours for it to be fully charged before I can buy it on my Kindle. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my Chain of Iron reading vlog. I thought unlike Chain of Gold where I did my chapter by chapter analysis, I would do a reading vlog. I thought it'd be something a bit different and then you could see my emotional demise as I get through these chapters and the pain slowly engulfs me. So I did actually buy Chain of Iron on pre-order from Litjoy, but obviously that is from the United States and it is gonna be arriving in the next few weeks. And obviously as the impatient Sagittarius I am, I cannot wait and I was like, I'll just read the ebook first and I woke up today and I made a cup of tea and I went to buy some snacks and I sat down and I picked up my kindle and um the battery was depleted and so I'm sat here now I've eaten all the snacks already they've already gone <laughs> um and I'm waiting for my kindle to charge so hopefully the next clip will be me actually reading it once my kindle has charged two thousand years later first reading update my kindle got to 11 percent, and it turned on and straight away i was on the kindle store i bought chain of iron because i got the online book i was not expecting to have the silhouettes in it one thing i had to point out here is this Cordelia one is the first one. And I have a slight obsession with people drawing noses right in fan art. Um, as someone who doesn't like their nose at all, I find it really annoying when people draw fan arts of characters or with ski slope perfect western noses. You can't really see it, but it's sort of just like, it sort of starts higher, then goes down straight. Or I've seen a few artists actually give her the traditional Middle Eastern nose, which is sort of has like a, a wee bump in it. And I just adore it so much. I just think it's so good to have fan art with characters that aren't typically like westernized beauty. And I mean, it's obviously, it's even more pertinent with characters like Cordelia that are half Persian, that we draw her accurately. But even for characters that aren't half Persian and that don't have any any Middle Eastern heritage in them. But I just thought this was really interesting and I really especially love this one of Cordelia. Brief reading update. Obviously I have read chapters one and two before, as I said, and I found this when I reread Chain of Gold is that I start to like characters and I start to pay attention to characters that I didn't pay attention to when I first read it. So when I first read Chain of Gold, I wasn't asked about Jesse. And then when I reread Chain of Gold, Jesse was like the coolest character and the funniest character. And I'm getting the same with Anna Lightwood. Like obviously I love Anna Lightwood, but the first time I read these two chapters, I was more focused on Cordelia. Now reading it again, having read the scene, having been familiar with the scene, Anna Lightwood's a who. I loved Anna Lightwood and I thought she was an underappreciated character. Anyway, I'm more transfixed on Anna than I was when I first read these two chapters in December. Clara Bella the Mermaid is coming and if you watched my analysis of the first two chapters I thought she was a stupid character. Three months later I still think she's a stupid character and I'm sick of it. Point in quote here he might not be able to control his heart or his thoughts but he could remove the bracelet. Does he not realize that by removing the bracelet he will be able to control his heart and his thoughts. Of course he doesn't realize, that's the whole point of Chain of Iron. At the other side of the room, Polly was ordering around a small team of brownies. Anyone else think that she was ordering around a small team of cakes? Okay, hopefully last update before I finish chapter two because it's gonna take me eight weeks if I keep updated every time <laughs> I see something good. It's just such a twist like going back into the Edwardian times because obviously they're talking about why James and Cordelia need to get married and they're saying that it's a sham marriage because that she lied um for James and you know that what that does to a woman's rep reputation it's so interesting I one thing I really like about Cassie's books is that she does her research and she really makes her plot as historically accurate as she can but it's just so different because in the dark artifices even in the mortal instruments in the 21st century like you know Emma is Obviously, you know how I feel about Emma Carstairs, but she's just living her best life. Her and Julian are having wild sex on the beach. Even Clary and Jace. And, you know, women aren't shamed for sex. They're sexually liberated. It's amazing. But it's just so interesting to go from one perspective to another perspective, to go from that modern era to this Edwardian era when you're reminded that Cordelia had to marry James because otherwise her reputation would be ruined. I've just finished the end of chapter two which brings me up to my current read because i'd already read those chapters so anything from now on is new am i going to keep reading yes do i have job applications to be doing this week because i'm an unemployed well 
part-time employed 2020 graduate yes but will i be reading chain of iron and making you guys a reading vlog instead yes it's really nice to have some backstory to grace because you just assume that she's a psycho but there's a reason she's a psycho i love lucy but she did kind of come in and throw away around and grace is a bit like well jesse's been my brother for so long um so it's really i think we really needed this it's not just lucy that they want to bring jesse back for it's also for grace one of my theories which was actually put forward by one of you guys said that you thought that grace was actually trained and that she was pretending to be not trained you cited the midnight air from the bane chronicles which is totally accurate where she threatened magnus with a knife and in this chapter we have confirmation that yes grace actually is trained so i'm really happy that this adds up this makes me really really happy that it wasn't a discontinuity error and that she was pretending to be trained i think that's really good and yeah it's only the freaking wedding day and of course like i know it's tradition for shadow hunters to get married in gold but gold is cordelia's color god you be so happy if you were Cordelia and you found out that gold was a traditional wedding dress color because you would be like man I can rock it imagine if you looked bad in gold though because that would be really upsetting what Elias is back oh my god Elias I've said it before and I'll say it again the Carstairs as a family are just iconic the Persian side of the Carstairs as well the fact that Alistair's middle name is named after a hero from a Persian book of ancient mythical kings is that not the biggest mood and the biggest vibe ever I hope whoever I marry guy or girl I hope that they get me a sword and a scabbard I know that this is probably hella cursed my current theory is that elias is working with belial and that this scabbard is a gonna cause some issues with cordelia and james i just want someone to buy me a gift like this will tessa have just appeared and i'm really tearing up <laughs> they've just appeared at the door and i'm a mess why <laughs> there are characters in this god she seemed well quite puffy and golden from what i could see you make her sound like a yorkshire pudding said james darkly moment of appreciation for all the non-british readers that are gonna have to google what a yorkshire pudding is um i'm gonna put a photo on the screen now for for you guys a yorkshire pudding is a savory side dish that you have with a roast dinner made of batter and it's sort of soft but also crunchy and it's like round. I mean, I'll show you the photo. This is a sidetrack. Oh, he was so close to removing the bracelet. Go get the ax that your sister so graciously wields and cut the damn thing off. Albert Pangborn, who had taken over the running of the Cornwall Institute from Felix Blackthorne in 1850. We're gonna find something out about the Cornwall Institute and Annabelle Blackthorne and Malcolm Fade in this book and I am not ready. Gabriel thinking that it was Anna Lightwood, his daughter, that helped James pick out his coat. Just look how far Anna's come. Philomena has just arrived and I don't know what you guys thought but I expected her to be like James's age. I expected her to be like James or maybe even Lucy's age, like quite young. She's the same age as Anna. I wasn't expecting an older Philomena. Ooh. I'm excited for her. Quick disclaimer, this is not a dead animal. <laughs> this is a furry throw um, because it's really cold in England and I like to think that I'm basically Aelin, Gareth Aeneas, and I am living in a medieval mythical castle and I need things like this because I'm dramatic. It obviously, it's faux fur. A flash of Tennyson went through James's mind. Who is this? if not the most Herondale Herondale to ever be a Herondale. Matthew was still glowering. He was splendidly dressed in a morning coat over a stunning Bricard waistcoat of Magnus Bane levels of magnificent. Embroidered with a spectacular battle scene, he had a gleaming silk ascot at his throat that looked to be woven of pure gold. I am so excited for these wedding fan arts. It's just gonna be absolutely stunning and I'm so here for it. Grace has just suggested they use Malcolm Fade. No! 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 This is it, isn't it? It's gonna, this is gonna be a Malcolm book, isn't it? We've got it! We've got it already! I get such a buzz when authors drop the um, title of the book in the book. And it's here! We've got it! She thought of it as chains, iron chains that bound him to her. What the fuck? Oh my god! The house! 
was made. What? What? Oh my god, what? The maid moved towards Grace. Now that she was closer, Grace could see she had an odd fixed smile on her lips. Lost then, are you unsettled? Grace started to move towards the door. Not at all. I just returned to the party. Oh, Grace, the whisper room dangled at an odd angle. Grace realised as if it was something wrong with the girl's hand. Her eyes stared unfocused. Oh, you are lost, my dear, but it's all right. I've come to find you. How scary is this character? The maid giggled, a sound that grated like an out-of-tune piano chord. Discordant and strangely hollow. Four months, four months, Grace swallowed. The bile rising in her throat, Mama. The maid giggled again. Her lips moved out of sync with the sound. Daughter, are you truly surprised to see me? You must have known I'd wish to see this wedding day. I did not know you had the power to possess people, Mama, said Grace wearily. Is he helping you? <gasps> Grace and Christopher? Already? I don't hate it. I, I thought I would. But I don't. I really don't. It's happening. The wedding's happening. The wedding, the wedding, the wedding. Cordelia's wearing Cortana. She's wearing a sword to her wedding. Iconic. There's something about girls with swords. That's it. There's something about girls with swords. Um, Jam. Jam is playing. <sighs> there needs to be trigger warnings for things like this. Why is the silhouette of James so ratchet? What is that, Cassie? What is that? That's not James Herondale. The Cordelia one was spot on. What's this? What's this? I want a refund. James Morgan, Henry Herondale. No, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm gonna take down some name ideas for the kids I will not be having. Cordelia, Cassie, you and Ca if I had these shadow hunter vows at my wedding, do you think my guests would understand? Holly would understand. How did James and Cordelia forget that they have to kiss at the ceremony? <laughs> it's so dumb. The one thing they forgot was that they had to kiss. <laughs> these dumb kids, these dumb in love kids. My little friend has come to join me. I think he heard me screaming from downstairs at this wedding chapter. Matthew dropping in that all shadow hunters are related already. <laughs> it's kind of iconic. I like that she can joke about it because sometimes I read these books and I look at the family trees and I think, oh, that's quite closely related. Tom's there, Tom's there, Tom's there, Tom's there, Tom's there already. Of course, Alice has said again, I would expect nothing else. He turned to Thomas who had been staring fixedly down his plate. Tom, he said carefully, if I could talk to you for a moment, it's happening. Everyone stay calm. It's happening, it's happening. So I came downstairs to make a cup of tea and I realized, oh, are you coming up little friend? Come here, come on. You getting in the camera? Yeah, this little guy's here. <laughs> um, so I realized that the next chapter, you wanna come in, you wanna read Chain of Iron with me? It's been three hours, I think, maybe two hours since I started Chain of Iron. And I really should be doing job applications, um, but it's fine because there are other priorities right now like this. You know, they say that dogs can sense your nervousness and anxiety. I think this one managed to sense my... <laughs> Hello. If you didn't sign on for dog content and you've been blessed with dog content, obviously this is the best reading vlog on the whole of YouTube. <laughs> Why have they moved to Mayfair? Do you know how expensive Mayfair is? You don't have to be British to know how expensive Mayfair is. Have you ever played Monopoly? I don't want to throw around the word Tory here, but I'll be so upset if the shadow hunters are Tories. The wound is the place where the light enters you. That is what Emma found when she was in the London Institute. For now, let's hope you don't need to look up words starting with L or M. Is that a subtle allusion to Lady Midnight? So I do believe the fact that Cordelia reaches up to fiddle with one of her pearl combs, it was beginning to hurt. So I think this is like an allusion to the fact that Tessa and Will's marriage is perfect and how Cordelia and James's is a facade because the pearl comb symbolize Will and Tessa. You know, it's starting to like dig in, dig in her head, like, oh no, this is a sham marriage. So I think that's an allusion to that, if I do say so myself. Are you kidding me? 
The king is dead is checkmate. I was preparing myself for Henry Branwell's death. This is what happens when the fandom theorizes and spirals before release. And we have it, our first Shadowhunter death. Amos Gladstone. I am really hoping that these so-called many shadow hunters that die in this story are people like Amos who we don't know because I read this and I laughed because who is that? No one knows who that is. I can get through this book if the people that die, we don't know them. That's fine. I can get through it in, I'll be at a broken piece, but in one broken piece. But if Cassie goes off killing characters that we know and love dearly, that will be me in many pieces. I'm thinking maybe 12 tops 20. RIP Amos. But this is good news because if we're tallying, the first one's gone and we don't know who it was. Ah. Oh. R.I.P. Amos. And we have the first use of Cordelia's new married name. Beautiful, flows off the tongue like she was almost destined to be a Herondale. Two hours later. Time jump, it's Tuesday night, my Kindle died, I had to put it on charge for three hours. I'm about 20% of the way through the novel, but here we go. And yes, I am in a silk kimono. A few inches later. Oh great, a gory in-depth chapter about Jessie's death. 8.01 p.m. And Annabelle, 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 Annabelle. The Alethea Crystal. One of the muses in the Dark Artifice, isn't it? Because that's how they, they see the same scene. Did you hear that? That's the sound of my heart breaking. Because I will never love you, Anna Murmured. I will never be with you. We have no future together, none. Do you still want me to kiss you anyway? What is this witchcraft? The first sex scene in Chain of Iron, and it's a lesbian sex scene. Anna and Ariadne having sex in the pantry. One happy customer here. Eventually. And he's there and he's reading the beautiful Cordelia. And the whole thing is like Lucy's written fanfic. It's like your parents finding out the fanfic you're reading. I feel secondhand embarrassment for Lucy here. You really think that she would have disguised the names better. Jethro being dark hair with green eyes and a ghost. Come on, Lucy, cover your tracks. Lucy's just confessed to Jesse that she loves him. They're gonna be resurrected and married now. Don't quote me on that, that might well happen. Right, James or Matthew. James or Matthew is the killer. After that Fleet Street chapter, and then James waking up the next morning and he's knackered. And I don't know why I think it's Matthew as well. I don't know, I just feel like it could be Matthew. A few moments later. This is some Harry Potter shit right here. Isn't this just when Arthur Weasley gets attacked at the ministry and Harry is like, I was Voldemort, I was Nagini, and I killed Arthur Weasley, ah! That's James, James is like, I was the murderer, that was me, I killed Basil, ah! There's that line, Thomas has very nice shoulders, legendary shoulders in fact, Cassie teased that two weeks ago, and everyone was like, that's Alistair saying it, it's not, it's Lucy, no one guessed that right. Day two. Good morning everyone. It is Wednesday the 3rd of March. Yes, these are Tinkerbell pyjamas. I'm glad you noticed. Just woke up. My mum was like, how's job hunting going? And I was like, yeah, really good. It's going really well. Okay, let's do this. Let's carry on. London in winter was surely worthy of poetry. This has to be James. James has to be the killer. Is this Philomena that he's trying to kill? Because my girl has just got here from Italy and she has not seen all the sights before she's gonna die. I mean, luckily she escaped, so that's all good. A few moments later. Why would she kill her off? That makes zero sense. Also, any Italians reading this, this sucks because I was so excited for you guys to have an Italian character and she's just gone and died, so. Lucy narrowed her eyes, so take me to her then. I will not, not unless you do something for me. Lucy put her hands on her hips. Truly, blackmail, you're a blackmailing ghost. <laughs> Maybe Constantinople could be our always. I'm so stressed, I went to make a cream cheese bagel. Tatiana is a goddamn psychopath. I did not expect to be eating breakfast today with a side of Tatiana's psychopath Blackthorn. Nice little reference to the midnight air here where Grace says, I am my mother's blade indeed. I hope you guys picked up on that as well. I am loving that this is set in winter. James Herondale, I expected so much better than you. There were all sorts of ordinary things that weren't considered women's business. Finances, politics, mortgages, horses, carriage upkeep. Don't pretend like your Aunt Charlotte isn't in control of the whole 
whole shadow hunter enclave. Oh my god, Elias is such a dick. <laughs> He's such a dick. But Grace just saying that Tatiana is in the Adamant Citadel, and if Malcolm wants, she can ask her mother to find out about Annabelle. This is it. I said this. I said this was going to happen in my video. See all these flyaway flippant comments that I've made and they're happening. And I'm like, why would someone, who would suggest that could happen? And it was me. I suggested it. And now it's happening. Why did I manifest this? <laughs> this is not a drill. Anna and Ariadne, whispering room. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Red alert. Red alert. This is not a drill. This is happening. Anna and Ariadne using the whispering room as a sex dungeon. You gotta respect it, really. Ariadne and Anna sex scene, great. Not so great. This. What on earth is that? What is that? Elias is dead. You're lying if you say you weren't hoping that he would be next when he said that stuff to James. You're lying because I thought it. I know you thought it as well. This is not a drill. Matthew is telling Cordelia his secret. Ooh, this cannot be good. This surely can only lead to more heartbreak for Matthew. Oh my God. No. <laughs> Kinky Lucy and Jesse bed moments in Chain of Iron. That was not on my bingo list. Oh my God. Do you know what I've just realized? You know that joke where it's like, oh, the hair and Dells waited until the last book to finally have sex with their significant other. And then Judy and Blackthorn storms in and just like has sex with Emma constantly. And just like his descendant, Jesse's like, well, I managed to sneak into an unmarried woman's bedroom and stroke her hair and go way over the bases that you've managed to do. The Blackthorns are sex gods. Grace Blackthorn telling James to kiss her. <laughs> Angry. One thing I want to pick up on is that she's wearing jasmine perfume. Do you know who else wears jasmine perfume? Cordelia. I'm assuming Grace has twigged that James is actually in love with Cordelia and she's trying to make herself smell as much like Cordelia as she can to entice him. Are you kidding me? All Waylon the Smith had to do was flip Cortana around in his hands and it's healed. Are you kidding me? I thought this was going to be like a major plot point. It's happening. It's happening. Malcolm is about to find out. It's happening. Oh my God, Malcolm's about to find out. Sorry. I bought some more reading snacks because you know when you read a book so quickly and like you dedicate a whole week to it, you need snacks to power through. I digress. Malcolm is about to find out that Annabelle is dead. <gasps> Uh. I really can't stop thinking of that meme when it's like the last hour's kids are just theatre kids because they've all decided to stay and guard James and they're like how should we pass the time and Lucy's like I'm gonna read from the beautiful Cordelia and that's the most theatre thing she could have done oh my god James and Cordelia oh my god <laughs> the power this girl woman possesses is astronomical. Okay, I've reached part two. Part one ends with the killer finding Thomas, who has wandered alone. My current theories for the killer at this midway point, I think it's Matthew Fairchild. I've changed my mind. I think that the reason James can feel it is because of the power party bond. I have no explanation apart from I think it is. And you know when you know, or you, you think you know. Lillian Highsmith, dead. But it's not Matthew. I'm racking my brains to think who this is. He was dead, dead in his prime. My first thought was someone like Benedict Lightwood, but then his wife, she wept and wept. Um, she died way before he did. Who the hell is it? And then my first thought was also Jesse, and then I read the word wife. Oh! <gasps> Is it Rupert? Is it Rupert Blackthorne? Dead in his prime, his wife. Tatiana, she wept and wept. Is it Rupert Blackthorne? Thomas just got arrested and I was brutally reminded that we're gonna find out who was sent to the Scholomance. What if the Scholomance is being used as a prison at this time? Thomas being locked up in the sanctuary. I have two things to say here. One of them is why the hell has no one cleared up since the last meeting? The traces of the meeting were still here, in the family crests, the black velvet curtains scattered, the lectern... Do they not clean up? Hazy shadow hunters. Second, the fact that he's 
on a chair tied with his hands behind him. That's just this fan art, isn't it? That's the fan art that she teased. And I don't even feel happy that I know what the context is now because it's, it's every bit as bad as I imagined it would be. Alistair following Thomas on patrol because he's in love with him. Will and Tessa are finally arriving. I was briefly reminded of that fan art of Dilf or Wilf, older Will, with the mortal sword. And he's either gonna be in charge of giving it to Alistair and Thomas, or he's gonna be on trial himself. And I'm not excited for any of those options. Lucy is the one that helps Malcolm. You're telling me Lucy helps Malcolm bring Annabelle back and inadvertently causes all that pain on her supposed descendants in the dark artifices. I won't lie to you, Lucy has been annoying me in this book because she just seems like such an annoying character. She does. But to think she has a part in this whole Malcolm and Annabelle thing. Paris. They're mentioning Paris. Get ready, Tom Stair fans. This is it. Thomas has just asked Alistair if he's gay. That's so big. 12 seconds later. Thomas and Alistair. <laughs> I just know if there's any smut with Jordelia at the end of this book, or even the cute stuff with Anna and Ariadne, I know that this is the scene the fandom are gonna dissect and quote and make fan art. This is the whispering room of Chain of Iron is the Thomas and Alistair makeout scene. It's gotta be. Meanwhile. Grace doesn't wanna use her power on Christopher. Sorry, this is an orange. Grace doesn't want to use her power on Christopher. Is this true love? I think so. Did you guys catch that Hypatia Vex's new shop is the same shop that Gabriel and Cecily went to together to find out more about Benedict and they ended up finding demon porn. Did you get that reference? Because that was really funny. Was that Matthew taking the pythos? Or was that Tatiana disguised as Matthew? That felt uncharacteristically unlike Matthew. The bracelet, the bracelet, the bracelet's off, the bracelet's broke, the bracelet's gone. Oh my God, I just turned the page and he's just, he's just gone unconscious. He's just collapsed. Ignore my previous clip of me partying, the bracelet was gone because James has just collapsed and I'm no longer partying anymore. Tomorrow. Why do I feel physically sick at the thought of finishing this book? I am low-key terrified. <sighs> Why Lucy thinks it's a good idea to be summoning Emmanuel Gast is absolutely beyond me. This is the daughter of Tessa and Will, arguably the two brain boxes of the Institute, and this is how she thinks she should proceed in her actions. Are you kidding me? We go from Lucy's stressful, awful raising of Gast to Thomas had no idea how long he'd been kissing Alistair Carstairs and a Will and Tessa reunion. I said it before earlier, Lucy has been kind of annoying me in this book. Do you know who's not annoying me? Thomas and Alistair and Will and Tessa, and they are both here in the same chapter. <laughs> I didn't come by your house last night. I told you, I told you that wasn't Matthew. Oh my God, I told you. Oh my God. The murders are to do with Jesse. I thought Jesse was a separate entity. I thought it was Jesse being dead and the murders, but no. Oh my God, is it Jesse? There's no way. I'm sorry, I have to keep reading. I didn't guess that it would be Belial with an alliance. I thought it was just him, which is good because it's one of those things that I should have picked up on. And when I reread this, I'm sure I'll pick up on it, but I didn't get it. I was not ready for that plot twist. Charles, Charles. Come on, it's better that it's Charles than Matthew or someone we actually care about. You're thinking the same thing. What, 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 what? Jesse, what? I thought this was gonna be Belial sauntering up and whistling. Feral? These aren't words to describe Jesse. Who is this? That's Jesse. Jesse. 12 seconds later. <laughs> False alarm is Belial. I've just worked it out. I've just worked it out. So I was right about it being Rupert because it wasn't Rupert, it was Jesse. But Lillian thought that Jesse was Rupert. So it wasn't Jesse, it was Jesse's body. It was Belial in Jesse's body doing the killing and getting the runes. But Lillian thought that Jesse was his father, Rupert. So I was right, I was right. Okay, this fight scene with Cordelia and Cortana is insane. It was never Magnus. Who was it? Why, why would someone take on Magnus's form? <sighs> Whew. 
Why are we bringing back Lilith? It's just not necessary, is it, Cassandra? Do you know what I'm really not here for? I'm not here for Cordelia thinking that she's not strong enough or she's not good enough to be when the Smiths Paladin. I mean, it's a shit situation that she's now stuck to Lilith. Sorry, I was so stressed. I had to go make a tea and breathe and calm down because that was a stressful discovery. <laughs> Please, Lucy is so annoying. I'm sorry. I really wanted to like Lucy in this book. I was so excited to read more about her, but she's so annoying. She shouldn't have been attached to this ghost in the first place. She should have formed other healthy attachments. No way are they still gonna raise Jessie from the dead. No, why can't they quit while they're ahead? There's no way that there can be a whole ass resurrection in three chapters. Do you know who is the real enemy of this book? It's Inquisitor fucking Bridgestock. Who the hell gave him the right to be such a dick? 20 minutes later. We're on the home stretch. I've just started chapter 27, or I'm midway through chapter 27. And I thought I would come back up to my room because I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot of screaming. I was so dumb. I should have known it was Magnus. His magic was the wrong color. Magnus stood a few feet away from James, yellow light playing around in his right hand. Wow, Cassie really played us. Matthew, I am sick of him. I love him as a character, but he has annoyed me so much in this book. Who knew Matthew? Matthew and Lucy would annoy me so much. Matthew just refusing to not tell anyone his secret apart from Cordelia and do you know what really annoys me? It's like, you know when you know someone knows something and you ask them outright what it is and they give you some sort of like cryptic clue but don't tell you? That's exactly what Matthew's doing and it's driving me insane. I'm not a very patient person as you can imagine but Matthew refusing to tell anyone his secret but Cordelia, especially his Parvati, has really tested my impatience this book quite a lot. Several bad puns. There's no way that she's just freaking brought him back to life. There's no way it can be that easy. No way. <laughs> no, we were just getting somewhere with James and Cordelia and he goes and says something like that. Oh my god, it's a showdown between James and Grace. <laughs> and I'm living for it. This is long overdue. Where's Cordelia? Where's Cordelia gone? Eternity later. <laughs> she saw James with Grace and legged it. A queen that knows her own worth. A Will Herondale perspective. Hold the front door. I feel like a dog that's just been given scraps, but I don't care. Bring me the scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Cordelia is spiraling. I have never seen a character spiral like this. Relatable. There's no way that she's just gonna go sleep with Matthew. Surely she's not angry enough to sleep with Matthew and betray James. A few inches later. Are you freaking kidding me? Low battery. How long do Kindles last? How long do Kindles last? Oh my god, I'm 95% of the way through. This cannot die. Really? Matthew confessing that he loves Cordelia. Really? Do we really need this? Is Chain of Iron sponsored by Paris or like parisgetaways.com? The amount of times that Paris has been mentioned in this book. Alexa, play Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> you took the midnight train going anywhere. <laughs> this is a mess of epic proportions. Did Will just cock block his own son? So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a- Oh my God. I finished and it's really funny because <laughs> Fede's literally just texted me. How are you? Are you finished? Yes. The answer is yes. Many mixed emotions and thoughts. Okay, in general, Chain of Mind was good. It can never beat the Dark Artifices for me because that's just my heart. It was worth the wait. Some points I thought it dragged a bit. I thought there was a lot of description. Maybe could have done without all the Grace chapters. All right, do you know what I think it is? I think it's because I've been in the fandom for so long now and every time a new book comes out we make all these wild theories and we're like, Matthew's gonna get his mark stripped, Sona's gonna die and it never gets that far. But it was very much like an emotional cliffhanger, like they're going to Paris. I was imagining the end of this book Matthew on his hands and knees stripped of his mark screaming for forgiveness instead it was Matthew getting on a train I don't know where Chain of Thorns is gonna go if it's gonna be half set in Paris half set in London I've got no idea I didn't want anything bad to happen to Matthew Fairchild of course I didn't but I was hoping that 
it would be more drama. This felt like a very emotional book. This was definitely a more, I feel like the Dark Artifices are more action packed and emotional, of course. I feel like the Infernal Devices had a really nice balance of emotion and action, but this just felt like pure emotion to me, which is fine, which is good. And it might just be because I had been reading Throne of Glass recently that I'm so used to high power action scenes, war scenes, that this did feel very emotionally centered. Very different to Chain of Gold, different pacing, different emotions, different atmosphere. I think it was a really good sequel to Chain of Gold, but I do think Chain of Gold might just like pip it at the post for me. It was one of those books that made you want to tear your hair out because everything the characters did, you were like, why? It felt like every direction you wanted the characters to take, they took the other one. Whereas I feel like in the other books, you could kind of see rhyme and reason with why Will, Tessa, Gem acted in that way. Even the crazy schemes that Emma and Julian did, you could see where they were going. Whereas this just felt like curveball after curveball and like I did not know where it was going I did not know what the characters were going to do next I think that's like a good and a bad thing it's a good thing because it keeps you on your toes but it's a bad thing because you kind of think well I can't keep up with it so what am I going to do but I did enjoy it and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching my reading vlog let me know if my reactions were similar to yours let me know if your thoughts were the same if this book has taught me anything is that no one writes badass female protagonists quite like Cassandra Clare and I'm so so grateful for that